Here's a sound design idea you can experiment with at home with limited gear. The idea is that we're going to play a recording from one device and re-record it with another. The devices themselves and anything in the environment will filter the sound. This isn't a new idea, it's the same principle as an echo chamber or a plate reverb or a spring reverb or something like that. But by applying the overall principle to everyday items and spaces around our houses, we can take sounds that would otherwise be kind of cold and dry, like maybe a software instrument, and bring it to life and give it some texture and grit and movement. To get started with this idea, you're going to need two devices. One to play sounds, I use my laptop with a Bluetooth speaker, and one to record sounds. I just use my phone and sometimes the little microphone built into the Apple headphones. If you have other types of microphones and speakers or old tape players or anything like that around the house, try it out. Once you have a sound picked out, it's pretty simple. Start recording on the recording device and hit play on the playback device. And when everything is finished, hit stop on both. Later in this video, I'll show you how to synchronize the re-recorded sounds with the original sounds in your DAW. Here's a few tips before you get started. Do at least two takes of every setup so that you can play with stereo effects. Make sure to be really careful labeling your files as you go through so that when you go to sort through everything later, you're not totally overwhelmed. And last, try moving around while you're recording just to add some variety to the sounds. Now check out some of my re-recording experiments. I used an 808 sound from Ableton with no effects. I did two takes of everything, so you'll see a split screen and you'll hear the takes panned left and right. I labeled each take in the voice memos app on my phone and then airdropped them all to my computer. When importing the files into Ableton or whatever DAW you're using, make sure that each file goes to a separate track. In Ableton, you can do this by holding command while importing. Now we just have all these files and we just need to listen to them one at a time and sort through. So what I'm doing is I just turned off all of the tracks and then I'll turn them back on one at a time. So let's start with the first one. I'm going to turn that track on and skip through it to find where the beginning of the audio file starts. So just as a reminder, here's the original sound we're looking for. So it starts with a kick and a hi-hat. So if we listen through, Phones take one. here's some piano stuff. There we go, there's the beginning of the beat. So if we zoom way in, 
we can see that this is the very beginning of the sound. So we're just going to zoom in as far as we can, put the cursor right at the beginning of that first sound, and make a cut. So in Ableton, it's Command-E. We can trim everything that happens before that. And here's our first file. So now I'm going to drag that all the way back to the beginning. And let's double check it and see if it synchronizes. So it actually sounds like there's a little bit of an echo. So let's zoom in and see what's going on. So, so yeah, you can see that this snare doesn't quite line up with the beat. It should be a little earlier. So what probably happened, let's listen to the beginning again. I think what you're hearing or what we're seeing here is that the, the first sound is me hitting the play button on my computer. It's kind of sloppy when I was recording. So we'll trim the beginning back a little bit and then let's synchronize it from that snare sound right there. And we can synchronize it so that it lines up with the MIDI. And then we can go back and drag the recording all the way out to the beginning. Let's see if this sounds a little more in line. Yeah, now that synchronizes pretty perfectly. Great. OK, so there's our first take. When I was recording, I recorded both takes right in a row. So let's listen to the end of this. Make sure looping is turned off. Cool. So it's somewhere in here again, but it looks like this time I started with the microphone kind of far away from the speaker and then brought it in. So I'm going to make a new audio track. I'm going to drag this down to the second audio track, and then we can try to synchronize. And luckily this time it should be pretty easy because you can see that the two audio files look very similar, right? So we can see these kind of similar shapes that aren't quite lined up yet. So again, what we can do is sort of trim from the beginning and then look for some of these obvious shapes, like these two should be in line, and just drag them to line up. It's close enough. And then we'll drag back to the very beginning. And now we have our take one in this track, take two in this track, and our original sound up here in this track. So what I'm going to do right here is turn off the original sound. I'm going to do take one, pan it to the left a bit. Take two, pan it to the right a bit. And let's see how these sound. So they're synchronized, and because we moved the microphone differently while recording, it has some nice variety in it. So what I'll do is I'm going to select these two tracks. I'm going to do Command-G to group, just to keep things organized. If you're using a different DAW, there's probably something similar you can do. And we'll call this take headphones, or big headphones. And then we can just keep that organized. So now to finish this up, I'm going to go through and do the same thing for all of these other recordings that I did. Just find the beginning of the drums, chop it, make two separate tracks, pan left and right, and group. Okay, so now I have everything grouped up, panned left and right, and labeled, so we can try out a few ideas for combining the re-recorded sounds with the originals. I'm going to start with the oven sound. I'll turn on that group, open it up, and let's just see how it sounds right off the bat. So this is both the oven sound and the 808 original sound. They combine pretty well. I'm going to put a compressor on the oven group, and I'll just lower the threshold until we see the gain reduction bumping a little bit.
probably do that with most of these recordings just to just to even out the levels a little bit. Um, some some of them you might even want to compress pretty extremely uh, just to emphasize kind of the ambience of the recordings rather than the transients. All right, so we've uh, compressed the oven. Now I just want to put on a delay. And the Ableton delay by default will open up with a setting to synchronize it to the clock, which is pretty useful. So let's just mess around with this for a minute. Cool. So I like what this does. Um, by de-linking the left and right channels, we have a nice stereo rhythmic effect. By pulling this filter up towards just the higher frequencies, we can kind of uh, let the delay mostly apply the snare and the hats and not so much on the kick. So we can avoid sort of a muddy mix. And uh, yeah, so I like the way this works. Uh, one thing I really like about the way this turned out just by chance is that at the very beginning, we have that uh, metallic sound from probably me bumping into the oven rack. So when we leave this on loop, it's kind of nice that that comes back every once in a while. So let's try something else. I'm going to turn that group off, close it up again. Um, now let's go to the bottle recording. This one was cool because it resonated a pitch out of the sounds. Sweet, I like the way that one sounds. Um, again, I'm going to put a compressor and sort of do the same thing. I'll just lower threshold until we have a little bit of gain reduction. Cool. So with this one, I want to try pitch shifting the audio files. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll select them both together I'm going to make sure warp is turned on so that we don't uh, desynchronize the rhythm. And then I'll just play with this transpose knob. Again, if you use Logic or a different DAW, um, there's definitely a way to do something similar. Cool, so that works really well. Um, here's my idea then. I'm going to duplicate these tracks so we have four layers. I'll reset all of them to zero. I'm going to pan a few of them differently. And then what I want to do is just transpose all of these to build some sort of a chord. So I'll just play around with it and go by ear. I like the way this sounds. Now I'm going to chop it up. So I'll just go by bar, and then I'm going to select all four of the copies from a single bar and change the transposition for all of them. So what will happen is that the chord itself will stay the same, but we can shift it up and down. And then we'll change this one down a little bit. And then this last one, let's go down a whole octave. All right, let's hear this loop. Hmm. 
hmm, that's pretty cool. Uh, last thing I want to do with this one, I'm going to just pop a reverb on and see how that sounds. Cool. I like the sound of that one. So there's just idea number two, doing a lot of pitch shifting, especially if you use a setting that emphasizes the uh, pitchiness of a sound. Okay. Um, last idea. Let's go to that paper clip sound. I really liked this one, kind of a distortion that comes out of it. So with this one, because it just sort of sounds like a distortion, I think I want to turn the volume of the track all the way down and then just by ear gradually bring up the level just to add a subtle color to the original. I also, I think this one would work really well pitch shifted. So let's try the same thing, making sure warp is turned on and then we'll go by ear. I'm gonna turn it up a bit though. Ooh, I like that. I like the way this, I like the way the kick sounds down a whole octave. So now we'll readjust the volume again. And then I think I'm going to do add one other layer here. I want to add the outside layer that might add a nice ambience or kind of reverbiness to it. So let's turn that on. And I'm going to put a compressor on this track. And same thing, just bring the threshold down until we start to see the gain reduction. So by adding the outside track, it's a little bit more of a subtle effect, but it just sort of adds an overall ambience to the sound. Cool, I like the way that turned out. So now just as a comparison, let's remember what the 808 sounded totally dry. All right, so my thoughts on this are, you know, when we do the re-recording, especially if we're using sort of consumer inexpensive speakers and microphones, the re-recorded tracks lose some low end especially, right? But by blending the re-recorded tracks with the original track and doing some of these creative production track techniques like uh, transposition and using some of the effects and things like that, we can have a pretty good balance between the power, you know, the low end of the original sounds with some of the ambience and texture and uh, more interesting sort of lo-fi sounds from our re-recorded sounds. So I uh, highly recommend giving this a try. And even if it doesn't sound so great right off the bat, the, the re-recorded files by themselves, play around with it a little bit and you can probably find some interesting sounds. So thanks for watching and let me know how it turns out.